Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be taking a look into why making YouTube videos destroys YouTube. Not as the platform itself, but a creator. Uh, it's mainly the shift from enjoying videos to researching videos. Have you noticed the subtle yet significant change in the way we interact with all YouTube videos? Well, stick around in this video because we're gonna be exploring why making videos might take a toll on the platform we all love. You know it's no secret that YouTube has become an incredibly competitive space. As creators, we're constantly striving to make content that stands out, content that connects with our audience, but in this relentless pursuit of success, are we sacrificing something essential? For me, personally, it seems like watching videos has turned more into a research project than enjoyment. Instead of just enjoying the content that I like and that I want to watch, I find myself meticulously examining every frame and every edit and why I am still sticking around and watching the video. With the new rise of creators that are trying to hop onto the Mr. Beast format and making that one of the most popular ways of making videos currently, it makes it very hard for other creators that don't want to take that path to stand out. With more and more creators constantly switching to the Mr. Beast format of making videos, it is making it harder and harder to build a connection with your audience. And if you remember, that's what YouTube was all about in the old days. The old days of making videos for passion and creativity and originality have all been completely wiped by this new generation of YouTube. I think a perfect explanation of these eras on YouTube were explained perfectly by MatPat on Anthony Padilla's spending a day with MatPat. At this point, what, we're, we're five generations deep into YouTube? Yeah. At this point, which is which is crazy to think what about. What are the generations again? Do, oh, you, the gen do you have them off the top of your <laughs> oh, head? Absolutely. Yeah, of course, the generations, <laughs> I love this. This is one of my favorites. Gen one uh, was the era of the viral video. Yes. So the this, cat video. Yeah, this was your keyboard cats. This was yeah. Tazon Day Chocolate Rain. This was the stuff that you sent to your friend via email being like, whoa, have you seen this crazy video? We the era of the original YouTuber, right? So this was the era of people who had those one-off viral hits mm -hmm. that took off, but you're the ones who kept uploading and not just uploading, but doing it with a consistent brand identity or a consistent yeah. tone. It was the, the Jenna Marbles, right? It was the, yeah. the Epic Meal Times. It mm -hmm. was the Ray William Johnson's Equals Three, right? Like mm -hmm. you had a somewhat consistent format or sometimes yeah. a very consistent format or at least a consistent tone, a look, a style, mm -hmm. a feel, and it was able to just like continue forward and people were like, I want to subscribe to this guy because mm -hmm. he's funny. I want to subscribe to them because, you know, they are make these giant hamburgers yeah. and they make jokes about bacon. You know, mm -hmm. Gen 3, it came when there was an algorithmic switch. Yes, that so, was 2011, 2012-ish time. Yep, exactly. So that was when it switched over to watch time as yes. the primary metric. So that also meant that shorter videos started to get hurt in the algorithm. Animation, yeah. shut up cartoons and stuff. Like, I yeah. mean, that was a very, th th this signaled the death of animation on YouTube mm -hmm. for a while. And so instead you had the rise of gamers. You had the yeah. rise of vloggers. And then Gen 4 was the Viner invasion. <laughs> Why? How, why does that get its own? Era. Well, because the Viner invasion symbolized the first influx of creators who grew up with YouTube as a thing that could be achieved. And so you had a generation of very smart, very savvy creators who grew up watching you, who grew up watching these vloggers and these viral videos and seeing wow, look at all the views they're getting. Wow, look at all the money they must be making. Mm. I want to pursue YouTube as a career. Now that brings us to the last couple years mm -hmm. where we've transitioned into phase five. Phase five has been a lot of different competing interests, right? You have brand safety being like one of the most deciding elements on the platform. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, the influence of TikTok and shorts now being a huge influence. You have the rise of Mr. Beast, you know, really creating this like umbrella of content that is like aspirational that a lot of other creators want to go to. You also have the rise of all the content houses as businesses have started to come in and see like, this is a place where I can, I can build my brand, right? If you look back at YouTube's roots to all the old creators, you can clearly see that they all had such a immense passion for making YouTube videos. And eventually over time, it went from passion to how many views can I get so I can get money. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a great thing that YouTube has gotten to the point where we're able to make a full-time living off of it. But it has completely ruined some creators in the 
aspect of making original and creative videos. Algorithm plays a significant role in determining the success of a YouTube video. But ask yourself, are you losing creativity in trying to please the algorithm? It's a tricky balance that we need to talk about. You need to be able to get on the balance where you are making passionate YouTube videos but are still able to get on the algorithm charts. So what can we all take away from this? Well, it's not about banning research altogether, but rather finding a way to blend your unique style of making videos into the algorithm. Remind yourself, next time that you're looking at your videos and thinking you're not pleasing the algorithm enough and want to change your format of videos, remind yourself why you started making videos in the first place. It's for creativity, it's for passion. So don't change just because of an algorithm switch. Personally, me, I've been doing YouTube for about 11 years now. I was creating videos and uploading them when I was like eight, nine years old. And here I am now, I am almost 20 years old. And I can say this whole journey has been absolutely amazing. Um, I have started on many different social medias and I will always come back to YouTube. It was the most encouraging and creative platform out there for sure. So the next time you're going to make a YouTube video, remind yourself, is it worth breaking your passion for a YouTube video?